data to establish committees and make standing orders for the orderly conduct of the proceedings, including the proceedings of the committees. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, the standing orders apply for the House and at the same time apply uh, for the business which goes on in the committees, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the standing orders are like a law, just like an act of Parliament. And, Mr. Speaker, the standing orders also are not cast on stone and therefore can be amended uh, from time to time, just like it has been proposed uh, this time. Under Standing Order 237, Mr. Speaker, when petitions are presented, there has been a, a practice of comments. And then, um, uh, at the same time, uh, a report will be presented and the comments will, will still ensue. Although, Mr. Speaker, the main idea of brief comments on petitions was to guide the House or to give a general f view to the committee, Mr. Speaker, it has ended up in uh, uh, consuming a lot of time uh, for the House, and, uh, and, and uh, a lot of times will go uh, up to 4 p.m. or 4.30 before we go into the main business, uh, which are the bills. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I want to agree with the committee that uh, so, uh, this saves time of the House, uh, and therefore the House will utilize that time uh, to do uh, more business and especially legislative. Although it had its own place before it was reviewed, Mr. Speaker, uh, that would be very useful in, into a committee. But again, how useful, Mr. Speaker? Sometimes those comments uh, may not even, <coughs> you know, end up constituting uh, the main part of the report as the committee will still have to do its work. So I think, Mr. Speaker, uh, the moves by the, uh, the committee have been uh, are very positive and it's to make this house efficient, uh, make this house serve devolution and Kenyans much better. Mr. Speaker, I support. Senator Chiranke, oh, you've, uh, so why do you want to speak against Senator and you are the one who seconded this particular motion? Senator Mungatana. Thank you, Mr. A Speaker. Error, Senator. Mr. Speaker, I have looked at the proposals on the amendments on the procedure to uh, present petitions in the House. And Mr. Speaker, I, I, I know that uh, the Chairman of JLAC has spoken on many other amendments, but I particularly want to mention this proposed amendment. Because, Mr. Speaker, the procedure, the current procedure now, where the committee receives a petition, and you know, Mr. Speaker, a petition is not like a normal thing. It's not a normal thing that comes before this house. A petition normally, Mr. Speaker, originates from citizens who have failed to get their justice. And it it's always says uh, the, the, the matter is not in court. And they say that uh, they have tried to do this and the other and it has not succeeded. So a petition is like a special way to approach the Senate. Mr. Speaker, the current procedure where if the petition has been negatived by the committee, the standing committee where it has been referred to, the report just merely tables that it's negatived and there is no debate. So the matter ends there. That procedure, Mr. Speaker, is uh, really lacking. I particularly like this amendment that says whatever the committee finds and the committee files that report, that report comes to the House as a motion. Mr. Speaker, I think that was a beautiful, uh, a very superior amendment to how to deal with petitions. Why so, Mr. Speaker? Because when the amendment now comes before the House as a motion, we have the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to debate it. And the citizens who have listened to, who have presented this petition before the House are able to hear the arguments for and against whatever their petition is. 
so that Mr. Speaker, the matter is prosecuted with with uh, severity and, and the weight in which the, the people who have presented the petition have approached it. Mr. Speaker, petitions on land matters, for example, you hear people, the committee has sat, the committee has negatived that petition. The person who presented the petition may have presented it as a person, but it is affecting hundreds or even thousands of people who are who'd want to listen to what happened. So, Mr. Speaker, I think the procedure that forces now, whatever the petitioner, the, the committees have found out, to be brought to the House for debate as a motion, I think it's a very beautiful uh, uh, amendment that needs to be supported. So, Mr. Speaker, I, I want to thank the Chair of the JLAC for that particular particular amendment on, on, on petitions. And Mr. Speaker, with those uh, uh, many remarks, Mr. Speaker, I beg to support. Thank you. Senator Osotsi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity to also make my comments on the motion on proposed amendments to the standing orders of Senate. Mr. Speaker, the standing order number 267 provides that the committee procedure and um, rules may at any time propose amendments to the standing orders. Mr. Speaker, this was important because uh, we are living in a changing world, changing scenarios, and uh, we may have a situation where it is a important for us to change our standing orders so that they are aligned to the current realities that we are facing as a house. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I fully support the amendment so that uh, this house has an opportunity to debate and uh, uh, make resolutions on petitions. Because, Mr. Speaker, petition is a very important uh, tool, a legislative tool, and uh, the practice in this House has been that uh, once a petition is uh, committed to a committee, and the committee makes a report, and it tables the report, uh, it ends there. Mr. Speaker, this amendment will allow this House to have an opportunity to debate the report of the committee and uh, approve the resolutions that are proposed by the committee. Mr. Speaker, this is important because some petitions uh, contain very weighty matters and it is important that those weighty matters are uh, made uh, as a house collectively. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there is also the issue of uh, ascertaining the presence of quorum before a voice vote is uh, taken. Mr. Speaker, I've seen on many occasions in this House when sometimes we don't have quorum and a voice vote is put and uh, a matter before us is passed by this House. I think this uh, amendment will allow this House not to uh, get to a, a risky situation where someone who is very keen can take this Senate to court uh, when we pass a law without sufficient um, uh, quorum before us. So this will help us uh, in this regard so that we are able to avoid scenarios where we can be taken to court. Mr. Speaker, on the issue of the implementation committee, I think I hold a contrary view. I have read the report by the committee and uh, I am not convinced by the reasons stated by the committee on the need to have the implementation committee. Because they have cited budgetary reasons, they have uh, cited that the, the parent committee can do that. But Mr. Speaker, there are so many issues that arise in this house which are ne not necessarily issues before the committee. For example, when cabinet secretaries appear before us, 